All right, now we're streaming. Okay, there we go. My God. Okay. Let me get Twitch open here. Okay, so I'll just wait for people to start joining and such, and we'll start uh, after people have joined. Okay, zero people, let's go. <laughs> uh, defining, uh, oops. I should probably not do that there, but anyway. Um, Alright, so um, Rahi will send the attendance form in the uh, chat. Yep, there it is. Um, yeah, that's about right. So go do your attendance there, you know? Go log in. Do your ten okay, two people. person did attendance. Yay. That's better than nothing. I'll take it. Okay. I don't think. Hey, Rahi, should I wait a little longer or should I just continue? Or should I just start the lesson? 
All right, cool. I'll set up the Python file as well. Um, functions meeting four. Okay. Well, I think two people is all we're going to get today. All right, well, cool. So, um, hello everybody, or just the one person. Hello, Steven, I guess. So, um, we're going to be learning about functions in Python today. Where, um, just a quick explanation of functions is pretty much, if you have a block of code that you need to run multiple times within a program and you want to do so in a more efficient manner without rewriting that same block of code over and over and over again, you can do uh, you can do so with a function. So let's make let's do an example. Um, I can define a function that says say hi. And then this function just prints out hello. That's it. So uh, if I wanted to, oh, well, that was slow. All right. If I call this function, it prints out hello. So instead of having to say print hello every time I want to print hello, I just call this function and it does that. This is a pretty simple example, but we'll go into more complicated versions of this later. Um, so you can have parameters in your function where each time you call them inside this parentheses, you can give something to the function where it outputs something else based on that. So um, uh, say hi one, where you have an input called name. So now you can say hello. All right. So now if I want to call say hi one for because I don't have a better name and say hello world. What if my name is world? Then that's it. So um, instead of needing to write this down for each time you want to do this, it's same with any function really. You just have to call this. Um, you have to call, call this function, and it's all in all, it's more efficient, especially with larger blocks of code than just one print statement. So um, you can use functions for many different types of things, such as you know calculating the volume. So you could say height uh, and radius. And this is going to be the volume of a 
cylinder, of course. So you can say return. Uh, what was the equation? Okay, height times three point. Oh. Well, yeah, I could just put three point one four times radius times radius. Or if I wanted to, I could just do times radius squared. That also works. So uh, print the volume of, let's say, a cylinder with the height of 15 and a radius of 3. That's going to be 400, approximately 493.9 uh, centimeters cubed, or units cubed, you know? Because the pi isn't pi, it's just an approximate value of pi. But still, the point still remains. So there are certain built-in functions with Python where they're already defined and you just need to call them. So you can use uh, functions called, um, let me see this. So sometimes you forget how to use a function and you could use it like this where it displays all the functions and attributes of this certain string so and if you wanted to know specifically about one of these you can do not gel help uh, test dot title title method of built-in dot str instance you know that explains uh, you know what a particular function does so you can learn about what type of um, function it is so you can do type test and you probably won't be um, using these too much but it's still good to know so you can see that test is a class of the or is an object of the class string which makes sense because it's a string so you that might be useful later but as of now it's just good to know um so now we can go over to more math related functions so let's go here let's see Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, just to, so yeah, because it isn't like yeah, the each variable has a can change type. You can take a string, a variable that uh, I I'm not sure how to explain it well. I can't really explain it well. But say you define you say you say d is equal to test. Um, you can also give d the value of one without error. That's different from Java. And it makes it a bit harder to debug when, but when you're coding, it's a little easier to just write it all out. So there's pros and cons, you know. Um, but anyways, we'll go to the built-in math-related functions. So, say you want to find the absolute value of something, you could write a short function like we did above here, where you just use an if statement to say if this is less than zero, then you just um, multiply it by negative one. But if it's greater than zero, just return the, uh, that number. But since uh, we just don't want to do that, it's a lot simpler to do this, where it just finds the absolute value of that number. And you don't have to code all that out. Now, um, you can also round numbers. So print round. Just a random number. Oh my god. Whoopsies. And then it rounds down to a one. Rounds to the whole uh, nearest whole number. Um yeah. So now we can look at iterable functions. So functions that look over the data types that we talked about in the second meeting, I think. Uh, lists, sets, tuples, and such.
but this one specifically for a list let's see so you have a is equal to a uh, list or array of one two and three one at index zero two at index one three at index two so say you wanted to know the length of that array which is pretty useful to know actually you'll probably use that a lot you just use len and that's it you can also print the sum of all the parts in the array just six. Now it's easy to do this, you know, just by hard coding it, but when you get to creating more complicated programs, you don't want to hard code anything. You don't want to hard code stuff that aren't isn't necessary to just clutter up your space, right? So it's good to have all of these built-in functions so you can just easily and efficiently run your code. I write and run your code, you know? So uh, you can print the max value of A. That's gonna be three. You can also print the min value of A, which isn't that surprising, but it's one. And you can also reverse the list. So there's lots of cool uh, built-in functions you can use. Reverse, yes, I did this one wrong. So you have to do, oh my God, okay. Reverse A. So now it reverses the list. Now, you probably won't be using this too much, but it's still good to know. You can also enumerate A, where you create a list of tuples where there is uh, one value is the index of the, num uh, the number and the other value is the actual, you know, value. So let me do that. Enumerate. Mm -hmm, exactly and yeah yep, exactly so yeah you'll a lot of these will prove useful in certain cases but as of now it's just good to know you know so yeah so there we go um, you can also do such a thing where if you create a list, uh, let's create, let's say I created the reverse list of A. So if I print B, B is the reverse of A, right? But B is now its own variable instead of just printing it out and not associating with any variable. So now you have that and you can actually use the function called zip to enumerate these two uh, lists together, which might be useful. I haven't really used this before, but it's still good to know all, this, all these built-in functions. You don't want to be wasting time writing something completely unnecessary when you could just call this. So yeah, pretty useful to know. Okay, so now we will move on now there is a function called map so well it's not map it's list.map not there we go so this is the syntax for it and it's an extremely useful function if you do not want to write a for loop which it's just more efficient. Um, so say I wanted to create a function, uh, multiply, yeah, so say I wanted to create a function where I just multiply and add, how about that? Okay, so I input a variable a here and I say a is equal to a times for 2.57 plus 6.78 random numbers that came off the top of my head but still you have those numbers and 
now you can print you can map okay so we have we already have this list a here right we're just going to use this as an example so you can map this function to each of the values in list a so you can say multiply add and then a huh wait did i do something oh okay yeah that makes sense i need to return it I am dumb. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> that was dumb. All right, there we go. So that's basically what it does. It applies it to every value in this list. And you may not really realize it with three, but it's just, or even then, you could just write a for loop, but it's just more convenient. Um, so we're going to keep using this. Uh, Oh, okay. So the next function, the next built-in function, so function, sorry, we'll be going over is the filter function. So we have can drive. So we get a value a. A is for let's make it a better variable name. A is for age. So return. Uh, yeah, we return age is greater than or equal to sixteen. So if you're 16, you can drive. I'm not even going to go into like you being 15 and having a learner's permit or anything. It's just for simplicity's sake. And yeah, so I'm used to Java, so I put a semicolon there. You can put semicolons if you want. You don't need to in Python, but it's good to have. I'm just going to leave it off. So now you can print list map no not map sorry filter you could put can drive and a and because well that's a pretty bad example because none of these can drive one person two is one years old two years old and three years old probably can't drive but let's do another example another list sorry where say c is equal to 17 23 and 14 so you have that then you copy this over with C instead so only uh, it filters out all the ages that are eligible to drive you know according to this function and since 14 didn't fall and since 14 returned false with this function it's not in there so yeah there's that now, uh, this is a really useful function from Python, actually, where a uh, useful built-in function, sorry, where you can read and write files from your program very easily. I mean, you can do that with pr most other programming languages, but it's just it's not as easy as here. Okay, well... So I will make a new file. Let's call it test.txt. Okay. And All right. So test file. Now, it's a really simple method call. It's just open text test uh, test.txt. And then this um, parameter means that it will be called in a write mode. Um, there was a key binding to it. Wait. Um, there is a certain key binding you can use to find all the parameters of a certain function. I forgot what it was, though. Well, it's all right. Uh, we can go over that later. But this um, W, the help. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, help open. Is it? Wait, let me see. Okay. This is how it works.
Oh yeah, that's true. Oh my god, okay. There we go. So these are the parameters and oh there you go. So um you can have your mode in read or write. For this example, we're just gonna be doing the write mode. So there's that. Yeah, read is for open for reading, write is open for writing, next create a new file, open for writing, you know, there's there's all that. Alright. But anyways, back to what we were doing. So now you can write test file dot write. And then you can write hello world in there. Or just test. And then test file dot close to close the file. Now, yep, there we go. Test in here. So yeah, you can edit files doing that. And um, you can also just read files. So I'll just show you how to read files. So still open. So you got test.txt. But this time, as you see over here, it's the read. So put an R instead of a W there. R. And then you just give that a name. Um, I'm pretty sure we covered uh, this type of, what do you call a width? I'm not too sure. Rahi. Like, what would you call this? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure we covered this before, but it. Oh, we didn't. All right. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just yeah. Yeah, yeah you're just. Uh, this is just temporary. Um, you can also do this. This would do pretty much the same thing, but you know. Um, there's that. So f dot read and then that's the function to read the file and then when it reads it it reads test uh, yeah there's that okay so now we can cover some other miscellaneous not miscellaneous but you know what I mean just other functions that don't fall into these nice categories we have um, so you can do DLB where it just okay so from uh, also a reminder to look at the notes we have on the GitLab this has everything we cover in a lesson so it's really useful to just look over if you didn't understand anything and you're looking at the meeting or if I just missed something I wouldn't be surprised if I did but so that's good um, yeah so delete b it deletes this variable from the memory and you probably won't be using it because i mean it's not really a function and it's not you probably won't be using it too much because you're not gonna have memory problems that often Yeah, exactly. It's not useful, but I mean, who knows? You could use it someday. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that deletes the variable b from the here. So if I try to print b, b is not defined. So there's that. Um, yeah. So. Eval. Okay, so this is a pretty cool function. Again, you probably won't be using this, but it's nice to know where, um, how, you know how Python evaluates various numbers using, uh, 
how it, PEMDAS, something, we, we covered this in the first lesson where it was some, a, some uh, a system similar to PEMDAS where it prioritized certain um, equations and certain operators higher than others. It was called operator precedence. I think we put something up in resources, the resources channel of our server, if you want to check that out, where it talks about operator precedence. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. Okay, yeah, that, there's that too. So if you want to look into that, you can. Uh, yeah, so uh, say you have 6 plus 5 times 2 divided by 4. Uh, yeah. So it's 8.5. It prints 8.5, and it evaluates that all in this string form. So, oh, that's interesting. See, I did. I learned something today as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. So yeah, so um, here is um, exec does pretty much the same thing as eval, but there's a big but here where it actually evaluates the code. So if you define any variables within eval, it, it, it's only uh, within eval where it has any where it's stored, you know? You can't call it from outside eval. But say I define this here, and I say num, it's 50. Now, if I wanted to do something like that, similar to that, and I said num1 is equal to 50. Well, won't even be able to do that, so there's that. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, now this, you'll be using this a lot. I assume you're learning about it in your programming courses uh, at school, so you can use that. Um, uh, you'll, you'll be using this in one, some way, shape, or form later on. So, yeah, um, it's good to know in general. So, you have a string, right? But say all right now this is best done with a function so say you have write hello and you have to input a name age birthday birthday month no birthday month wouldn't fit in there never mind just name and age <laughs> uh so here you can print out hello, hello. Um, uh, hello, whatever your name is, you are years old. Kind of weird sentence, but there it is. Um, after the string, you do dot .format. So this is a bit different from Java if you're used to that or if you're learning that. So don't get too used to this and put this on a quiz you take in school or anything. <laughs> so uh, name and age. There's that. So write hello. Let's say I wanted to write hello to Bob over there. And he was 113 years old. Hello, Bob, you are 113 years old. There we go. And yeah, you can write hello. See, what it does is instead of, you can do pretty much the same thing. So let's say I comment this out, right? You can do pretty much the exact same thing with hello. And then you put name. Then more, or no, you are, then this, 
and age and years old. There we go. No, I did something wrong. You can concatenate a string, not an int to string. Oh yeah, there's that too. So you have to do this. There we go. So you can have that, which is a messy line of code. You know, it's going to give you errors with integers. So you have to uh, encompass them with an SDR. Or you could just do this. This is so much simpler and easier. It's just more efficient. This is this whole lesson, this whole meeting is about efficiency in code, you know? So there's that. Um, yeah, and there are different ways to do this um, other than the one I just put. So I'll comment this one out as well. So if you want to write even less, if you're fingers really hurt or something, I don't know. Uh, you could just put name here and age here. And that will work as well. Just put an F in front and that's it. And there is another way to do it. This is the last one though, I promise. Um, so you can use these percent symbols to signal to one of these. So, um, let's see, percent D, D stands for decimal, so, no, not decimal, sorry, yeah, so S stands for string, right, so we have a name, a name is a string, so we want to replace this with the string, so here we are, it has to be this, because, um, Say I only had an H here. It, this wouldn't work. Oh yeah, that's true. We're in Python now. My bad. It would work, but you just want it in the right order. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, this is a decimal for age. So yeah, this has the same exact result. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now this is a really useful time. Oh, yes, exactly, yeah. So D is for decimal, what is for, what was for floating point numbers, was it F? No, wait. How did this one work again? Is it like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. So five point uh ten. There we go. So it's just ten digits and zero. Yeah, so you can if you've learned this in Java, you know how to do this. This is pretty simple. So now we're gonna cover lambda functions. So lambda expressions. We're running a bit short on time here, but I mean we only got one person on the meeting, so it's not like we have. Uh, it's not like we're too worried about time here. So if you want to leave, you can leave in a few minutes, but just you know, stay on. It's interesting. Um, so lambda x um, and this lambda expression returns x squared square oh yeah I knew lambdas were important but I didn't know they went into that much depth with it but that's interesting I didn't know that okay well um yeah so you can write, this is basically a one line function. If you boil it down, you know, that's it. And um, say, okay, so if, oof, how would you use a lambda? I mean, okay, while, let's, let's see, we have while true, right? 
if hmm yeah if lambda x is x squared is greater than I think we need to go into more depth with lambda functions but anyways um Wait, tell me if I'm doing this syntax right because I haven't done lambdas in a while. Let me see. Um, um, okay, so we have uh, x where we incremented each time. So x equals 0, and then if not, x plus plus, you know. So is x is greater than. 100 for example so yeah there you go um is the annotation bad wait what what oh okay if is break am i doing this right no okay well there we go. So I'll just print x at the end. That's not right. OK, I'm doing something wrong here. Hold up. <laughs> How do you do it in one line? How would you call it? Oh, I see. Okay, so. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, is it necessary? It's not too necessary, though, right? Yeah, I did. I did. Wait. So here. Wait, 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 here? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, the delay is kind of screwing us up. Wait, no, it's not working. Well, you've had a nice debugging session with us, you know, whoever's watching. So that's good. <laughs> x squared, x is equal to, uh, Oh, okay. While well, we're dumb, no, no, not we are dumb. I'm dumb. That was that was pretty obvious. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's why. Yeah, all right. Well, you saw how it worked. You know, you just call x here. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Um, and then it evaluates here, and then you use that as condition for the while loop to just. Uh, check whether x squared is less than 100. So that was lambda expressions. We are going to be using those a lot more. So it's a good reminder that I need to review lambdas a little more. <laughs> but anyways, um, that's. I think that's it for the meeting. That's perfect timing at 5:30. You know, just 15 seconds late. But there's that. Um, so thank you for coming to this meeting and uh, if you're watching this if you're watching the YouTube video then thank you for watching our YouTube video you know so uh, I guess I will just end the meeting now have a good Thursday